Welcome to the nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and it's Sober October, baby. Yes, I know on this show we tend to have a lot of fun. We have cocktails, drinks, all the things, but baby, today we're talking about sobriety. What is the journey to take on abstaining from drinks, going alcohol free? Is it easy? Is it hard? Do you need a community? Do you need AA? We're going to dive right on in. But first, as you know, this is the nightcap. We do need a drink in our hands, but it's not a cocktail, <laughs> right, Ronald? We've got a mocktail. Not, we have a mocktail, yes. Because we can still have fun if we're we alcohol free. Absolutely. Enjoy and socialize, right? Absolutely, yes. All right, what is this gorgeous black <laughs> cocktail, mocktail, mocktail that you have for us? So we have a uh, spice pear uh, mocktail with mm -hmm. a little bit of ginger and a skeleton leaf. I love it. Oh, <laughs> skeleton leaf. Yes. Okay, this is perfect. October Halloween, yes. <laughs> yes. And you have a journey you're going to share with us too. Yes. All right, I so do. come on over to the couch. We're going to talk to you. <laughs> and I've got two other people who are willing to share. So let's get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. All right, let's dive into the conversation about sobriety. We've got some familiar faces and new ones. We've got Izzy back in the building. Welcome, Izzy Zapata. Right. Thanks for having me back. Happy to have you. We've got Lindsay Madison here for a very different episode. And we're not talking about your love life. We're talking about your sober life. <laughs> and Ronald Mesa, who's the owner of Bar Chefs Houston, made us these delicious mocktails, yes. not cocktails. <laughs> and uh, you also have a story of sobriety. So let's start with Correct. like how long each of you have been sober. Uh, I've been 46 days. 46 days. Congratulations. It feels like three years, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the fast life you live, right? It yeah. slowed down a lot here recently, so. Thanks to the know. sobriety, Thanks I'm to sure. sobriety, yeah. <laughs> Lindsay? Um, since May 31st, so roughly four months. I don't, I didn't count today, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right, May 31st. Renault? Six and a half years. Six and a half years. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, then, then these are the goals, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. Well, it, yeah, so it depends. It, like, because I'm a very active member of uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, so mm -hmm. it's, you, you, I have six and a half years. Some people might have five days. It's the same thing. You never know when you're going to start drinking. So you take one day at a time. One day at a time. One day at a time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so is the goal, goal for each of you to remain sober for the rest of your life? Um, I think that's like, <laughs> something you kind of figure out through the process as far as for me right now I'm telling myself oh maybe you know it's gonna be for a year but then you know being around people in the AA community and you know people online they say once you kind of get past a certain point you hit a point where it's like well, I don't even want to go back okay so Ronald and Izzy are part of AA right mm -hmm. Lindsay mm -hmm. you're not part of AA no, this I was never, a lifestyle change for you, right? Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't really a big drinker. I just one day I woke up and kind of realized that I'm drinking poison, and I don't want to. Why would I poison myself? I eat organic. I try to live a very healthy lifestyle. So mm. why poison myself? And then I feel like dirt the next day. And the last time I drank, I could not. I drink one mimosa and I could not get out of bed. So well, it was that easy for you to just wake up one morning and be like, "Baby, I am not touching alcohol again." I said a prayer for God to break any chain from my life that he did not want on me. And the next day, literally, <laughs> I'm gonna sound silly, but I was like, I don't think I wanna drink anymore. <laughs> it was that simple of a thought and I've not gone back. I had one mimosa within that time and that's when I felt like I was dying and I said, I'm not doing this anymore. Not doing it anymore. Not, not, it's pointless. So what is what are you holding on to each day? Because I'm sure you're still a social butterfly. You're dating, like, you're presented with drinks constantly. Oh yes. <laughs> um, Everybody is. Yeah. Right. Espe especially you. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> right. um, so how do you choose? Um, well, I'm 40 now, and every time I drink, I get lines all over my face. Mm. That's a really big motivator. Mm -hmm. um, my kidney and liver feel inflamed. My GI tract, everything inside of me feels inflamed, and I just, I look older, mm -hmm. I feel older, and... So it's just, easy for you to say, it is. no mas. I mean, once in a while I get tempted. My best friend's birthday, she had a wine tasting and it was a little, I had to, I had to have help from my friend to not at least taste a glass, but I did well. I didn't do any, I didn't drink anything. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. really proud of myself. I'll pat on my back. There you go, girl. <laughs> All right, Izzy, you have a very public life. 
people have seen you in all say, shapes and forms <laughs> from Love is Blind to Perfect Match, and then of course the social media drama. It was funny, it was fun to see the back and forth drama, but then to see you say, you know what, I'm choosing a new life of mm -hmm. sobriety, it was like, oh, like, he's taking some accountability for his past choices. Yeah. So how was that for you to decide, like, baby, I need to let go of the drink for a bit? Yeah, um, I mean, I just kind of reflected, you know, from TV shows, I was always drunk, known as the drunk. Um, to the poor decisions that I've made in my normal life. Um, I think hit really hitting rock bottom with, you know, all the drama that happened on social media. Um, I just really wanted to take accountability and the common denominator for me was alcohol. Mm. Um, I was, it would make me make decisions that I didn't even remember making. Um, and I couldn't control it. And that's what I knew I had the issue. I couldn't just go and have a drink um, or two at dinner. It was like I need to have a drink and I need to black out and substance abuse on top of that and so I Finally just woke up one day and wanted to fix Everything that I you know had ruined whether it been people situations anything like that and more so myself um, Just like Lindsay said I feel like <laughs> um, Puffy eyes red all the time and the depression that came afterwards mm. you know the next day I think for me I'm a very sensitive person um, and so to f you know all that depression that came along with it I was like I'm tired of feeling this way um, I felt like I just kept waking up to um, kind of just cover the depression with alcohol so it was a never-ending cycle um, and I just woke up one day and I googled you know an AA spot and I just showed up and I felt like I did not belong there. Um, mm. I felt completely out of place, completely uncomfortable, in denial that I had an issue. Um, but if it wasn't for AA, I mean, I wouldn't be sober today. Wow. So yeah, completely has slowly changing my life, but it has not been easy for me at all. Okay, we're yeah. gonna dive into AA and how difficult it is. Mm. Oh gosh, we're learning a lot today, baby. All right, you stay right there. We've got more about Sober October coming up next. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been discussing our journeys into sobriety with Izzy, Lindsay, and Ronald. Izzy, before the break, you were talking about your journey and how uh, you've approached AA, mm -hmm. Alcoholics Anonymous, which I feel like really is anonymous. You don't really know much from the outside except that people who want to be sober or are trying to be sober go to these events. So AA has been great. Honestly, it's been what's saving me. What's been difficult for me is that I cut everything cold turkey. Um, and ah. so if you're thinking of going sober and you understand that, you know, you may have an issue, um, I would recommend seeing a doctor um, and don't just cut it cold turkey because your body will completely have so many different withdrawals that can't, it's not good for your health. Um, oh, wow. Mental health as well. Um, I just had to get medication. I tried to do it with no meds, no nothing, but. It's crazy. You can yeah. actually pass away from yeah. alcohol withdrawal, actually. You get a seizure and you die. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that you did a culture like that. Yeah, and I was just yeah. like spiraling. You, you would have thought it would have been <laughs> great, but I was just getting worse and worse and worse, and I almost committed suicide the other day. Oh, so no. I just got out of a psych um, oh hospital yesterday so no. yeah so for those I mean don't cut it cold turkey um, I definitely needed medication so it's definitely been a struggle <laughs> but AA has saved me um, in the sense of hearing other people's stories when you're going sober you feel so lonely you lose friends you don't fit into places is what you feel like you go through a whole life change in a snap um, and AA is the one place that will help you feel normal in mm. some way because you can relate to all these people and it's a place where you know absolutely no one and you feel like you don't belong but every single person in there loves you and will be there for you um and it was just honestly an amazing feeling so that's why i go back you know all the time for it and but how it's does hard aa work for the two of you who are part of it like there there's you just, just show up like uh, and you, you do there's actually an app called uh open chair and it tells you all the AA meetings that are near you and what time the meetings are in case you need to drink and you need to hit a meeting right there and then. Mm. And, and it's nationwide. Wow. Um, so you show up and you sit down. If you're drunk or you're high at the time, 
you just try, you don't talk. They recommend for you to not to speak, but you can go if you're drunk, you just don't speak. And they know, they, they can see, you know, an alcoholic knows another alcoholic. So they know you're struggling, so they'll try to help you, help you out. Um, and then once you get in the program, then you become more familiar with the faces. After the meeting, or they have like coffee breaks, they'll, um, they'll, everybody will come up to you, introduce yourself, et cetera. And then eventually you get a sponsor, and then that becomes your best friend for the rest of your life. Wow, Izzy, <laughs> do you have a sponsor? I do, yes, <coughs> I do. But um, that's one thing I've also but. learned. <laughs> like, yes, you get a sponsor, it's highly recommended. Um, but not every sponsor will be for you. It's like a perfect example when you go to therapy. Therapist. You got to go yeah. through a different therapist to find the one for you. It's mm. the same thing with the sponsor. So, mm. uh, it, you know, unfortunately, you can fire them. Um, it's not something that, you know, it's a great you thing to do. You want to do, right? You don't want to do, but like at the end of the day, you're there for yourself and you got to find what works for you. So. so you're on the hunt for a sponsor. Well, I still have mine, but yeah, I think, you know, it's time to find, you know, a, a new one. You can have some sponsors, you know, you can... It's yeah. fine. You yeah. got two See, this is new to me, can. so I'm still learning. Like, this guy's got six years. Yeah. I got 46 <laughs> days. Like, there's still a lot that I'm learning um, through the process. So, so yeah. I love it. Okay, Ronald, we haven't heard from you. So, coming up next, <laughs> yes. we're going to hear Ronald's story of six and a half years of sobriety. You stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about different journeys of sobriety. We have Izzy, Lindsay, and Ronald. Yes. Ronald, you've been sharing a lot of knowledge with <laughs> Izzy about AA and ed yes. educating us, but you have six and a half years of sobriety, so I'd love to I hear. I do. Um, so I started with drugs. I was a drug addict. Uh, I was addicted to cocaine, and then um, I alcohol as well, but that was my main drug. And then um, I got pulled over in Brasoria County, <laughs> and uh, uh, I was taken to jail. That was my very first time ever. I was scared. I was crying in the back of the police <laughs> car. <couple. laughs> <laughs> it was horrible, yes. So then um, uh, that was like a big uh, awakening. And then I stopped. I stopped that cold turkey. But Coke. then I. Yes. Okay. But then I doubled up on the alcohol to make up for it. Mm. And then that was horrible too, you know, because it's, uh, it's alcohol is legal at the end of the day. So it's, it's more accessible and. Um, I just uh, got diagnosed with cirrhosis stage one and two, but once you develop cirrhosis, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Um, so, but I think what a lot of people don't understand is, I do believe alcoholism is a disease. So once you get to a certain stage of alcoholism, it's not you anymore. It, it is a bigger monster that kind of takes over because the things that I did when I was drunk, I look back, like I look back at it right now and I cringe. I cannot believe that you that was me. Shame, I feel guilt. so much shame and I can't take it back. Just I, I ended up in the hospital because I kept drinking. I kept drinking. I, I even though I, I was diagnosed even though you with knew the cirrhosis diagnosis. I went through one, like two, three. I just I couldn't stop. I told everybody that I was, but I I would hide little bottles of Crown Royal under my pillow because I would get the shakes in the morning. It got so bad that I would wake up and I would have shakes. So the first thing I did, I was just take my little shot and then the shakes would go away and it was okay. I was a functioning alcoholic and then I was a bartender to top it off so I had access to alcohol all the time. So I was drunk pretty much 24-7. Wow. Um, and I did that for a very long time. So um, what, was the, what so was the breaking point? I went to sleep and then uh, I woke up and I thought that I needed to pee and um, I went to the restroom and then I needed to burp and when I burped there was a big chunk of coagulated blood and uh, I thought I was dreaming, actually, as a matter of fact. Suddenly, I just realized I wasn't dreaming, and everything kind of came into focus. So after that, I started projectile vomiting blood everywhere. Oh, my God. Everywhere. Wow. And then I was like, so <laughs> so then, I, uh, you know, everything kind of came into focus. I was like, I got to call 911. I got to unlock the door in case I pass out. And I was so far away from the front door. So everything is like tunnel vision. And uh, I don't know who chose, I guess. Uh, I don't know, God, I just, but I chose to fight. My body chose to fight. So I called 911. I had 911 uh, on the phone with me. And I was like, I was vomiting, then it would stop. And then vomiting, it would stop. And it was so much blood. I remember so much blood everywhere. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to survive. Like, there's no way. There's And uh, fire department got there. They gave me little bags to measure how much blood I was vomiting. But uh, you were filling them up. Yeah, I was filling yeah. them. And the, the fire firemen just 
So the ambulance got there and they were kind of scared to go in because it looked like a blood scene, like a, it looked like a crime scene. It was, it was really bad. Um, and then I was feeling a little weak at, at that point. A little? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what do you mean a little? <laughs> but I was still conscious, like I still kind of knew what was going on. Um, were you drunk when this was happening? I, w I was, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not drunk, but I, was de I definitely had alcohol in my system. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so and they then, took you uh, to the hospital, I assume. They took me to the hospital. That was the last thing I remember. Then I woke up three days later at Baylor in the medical center. I thought it was a Tuesday and it was a Friday. Because th what happened was the <clears throat> a varicis in my stomach ruptured when I was asleep. And the fact that I got up to go pee saved my life, essentially, mm -hmm. um, because I would have bled to death uh, asleep. Um, <laughs> So then they eventually told my family that there was one more procedure that they could do, which is the TIPS procedure. If that procedure wasn't done, that they were just gonna have to disconnect me and, and let me go. Um, at the time, the procedure only had a 30% survival rate. Um, they, they chose the procedure uh, and it was successful. I, I needed to be on the liver transplant list. Um, so, so in order to get on the liver transplant list, as if you're an alcoholic, there's stages. You have to go to AA for three months and get signatures. They don't want to give you a perfect liver if, if you're going to ruin it again, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. So I had to learn how to walk again. I had to, like, I was like skin and bone. It was so, so bad. Uh, so I ended up uh, going to the, I Googled AA near me and uh, I was so scared uh, to go to AA. I was so scared. Uh, yeah. That wasn't my first time, but I had gone to AA drunk before so it's different when you have when you're drunk because you have that that power you know mm. um sober it was i was like a little deer just like behind the door um so i just went sat down for a couple of days and then i eventually just started talking to people and i asked a lady called ola and she wanted to be my sponsor and she was like i would love to baby but i can't <laughs> she was like it has to be the same sex so she recommended me to Roland, who I would have never in my life would have chosen. He's like an old, like, <laughs> he's like an older black man, very grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's so funny because I, uh, he's, he's my best friend still. Uh, so, so you went to that first meeting sober and you've been going ever since? I, ha I went, f well, my hope was to still get on the liver transplant list because I wanted to serve, I wanted to live, I wanted to get a new liver. Um, so I ended up going every day, I would get signatures. And then uh, when I went to get tested again, um, they told me that I didn't qualify for the list anymore because my liver had regenerated enough to not need a liver anymore. Um, so I take medication, uh, I take a syrup every day. I, I spent 10 years drunk, it was, it was bad. And so I, as soon as I got out, I started my own business. I, um, then I started my second business. And then and I now started. Now you're six and a half years. That was six and a half. And yeah. The inspiration to people watching at home. Yes. <laughs> and I assume Lindsay and yeah. Izzy as well. So yeah. It's Thank you for sharing. Of course. Thank you to all of you. And now you have to make a cocktail. With of me. course. Oh, yeah. Excuse story. me, a mocktail. Uh, Damn it. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna talk a little bit more coming up next. You stay right there. Welcome back to the nightcap and baby, I still came behind the bar. Even though it's sober October, you can still enjoy a mocktail. There are options out there. Luckily, everybody is now getting along with this thanks to sober October and dry January, I think. All right, and you're making that delicious cocktail. I am. Mocktail. <laughs> That's two roosters. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, so what's in it? So we have, pear, we have pe three ounces of pear juice, one ounce of lemon juice, we have a half an ounce of old fashioned syrup, which has uh, notes of cinnamon, clove, and orange. And this is actually our company. Oh, there uh, you go. Yeah, you can Bar find Chef's it at Houston. Bar Chef's Houston. You can get it at uh, Henderson and Kane. You can get it at a Second Cup uh, Coffee or online, pedalimpour.com. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so before we go, Izzy, what advice do you have for someone at home who's thinking about going alcohol free or has a family member? Um, just take it literally a day at a time. One thing I've learned every day sober is the celebration. Um, do the process of it. What I mean by give yourself some grace, you're gonna have cravings, things to help with your cravings. For me, I got Dr. Pepper, sweets, gummy candies, everything, and I'm big on my fitness, but you know, I wasn't so hard on myself. I said, 
go ahead and eat anything you want, drink anything you want at any time of the day, except alcohol, obviously. Um, and yeah, just kind of give yourself some grace and it'll get easier as the time kind of goes by. And don't be alone. Call family and friends if you ever are spiraling because um, it, you know, it may happen and you'd be surprised how much people would actually be there for you when you feel very lonely, so. Wow, that's awesome, thank you. Lindsay, any advice? I would say keep yourself busy. Um, just make a list of things that make you happy, that truly bring joy to your heart and do those things. Um, reach out to family, be around people that you love and really just fulfill your life with things that truly bring you joy because if you're happy, then you're not gonna be as inclined to want a drink and it really does help. And Ronald, who Hi. is putting the final touches and who is our veteran Final here. touches. Um, I think, uh, yeah, don't get lonely. Like, like you said, if uh, I always tell people, if you, if you want to, um, if you want to send me a message on Instagram, you're more than welcome to. So, D. Ronald Mesa, uh, we'll go to a meeting together. I mean, but yeah, don't be lonely. That's one of the don't worst things. Do not be lonely. <laughs> and find your community. Find All your right, community. Listen, cheers to y'all. Congratulations. And listen, we're gonna follow up with you. All right, cheers to you. We'll see you guys next time.